In the final chapter of this tutorial, we will learn how to use KeyShot's Animation Wizard tool for creating a high-quality turntable render of our amulet. So final step is here in KeyShot, let's learn how to make a turntable for our amulet. So in order to do this, the first thing you need to do is set up an animation. So this button down here where you see this says animation, you click that. And then you'll notice that a, um, a timeline shows up down here. What you need to do first is click on this Animation Wizard tab. You click this, and then it gives you a bunch of different options of whatever you want. So I'm just going to click Turntable. Um, camera animation by default is set to hmm, actually just kind of spinning like this, which is totally fine for me. But you can pick different uh, things for your turntables and what you want it to do. So anyways, um, this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to say Next. And here you can choose what you want to rotate. I actually want our collection of my uh, model. So over here, you can still see this. So the gem and the metal, I want those to be rotating in the scene, but I don't want my lights, which are under here and here, the sphere and plane to rotate. So I'm only gonna select the ZBrush section. So let's say next. And then here, you're just gonna be choosing um, different settings. By default, it's going to set to 360 degrees rotation. And then our time settings, uh, it's going to ask you from start to end how long you want it to take. I want it to go for about 15 seconds, so I get a nice transition. And you just need to change that, so I'm just going to type that in here. So start, end, 15 seconds, duration, 15 seconds. Then I'm going to say finish. And now it's actually trying to run it live. So you can kind of uh, test this out right now. You can see there's only six sec uh, seconds showing in the timeline, but I can just click and drag here to see how it rotates. And the cool thing about this is the lights stay where they are. So that way we get to see how the light works on the surfaces. And I'll usually just rotate these quickly to make sure there's nothing strange happening. And you can see how it starts to come around here on the side. Uh, we can drag this timeline here just to make sure everything goes around all the way. And I think all of this looks really good. One thing that I normally will do too is whenever I'm ready to render this, I will do a test render to make sure um, the quality is going to turn out the way that I want it to. So in this case, whenever you're ready to render, after you've set up your animation timeline, all you have to do is come up here, click on Render, go down to this Render Selection. And instead of doing a still image, this time we're going to go to Animation. I'm just going to pull this over to the side. And then you can choose your resolution. For me, in the end, I only want a height resolution of 1K-ish. So I'm going to do 1080, and then I'm going to press Tab. I'm using 1080 because that's actually a good aspect rate, uh, ratio for mobile devices, and also the aspect ratio for height that I've been doing for our videos. So this will show up nice later. And uh, next, you can choose video output or frames output. I recommend that you do frames if you have something that you can comp a video together. If you don't, you can just choose video output. But I will unselect the video output and then frames output. I'll have this selected. You just choose where you want things to save at. I believe I made a crest test. Let's make a folder called frames. That's where I'm going to save my files into. So let's just do that. Control V. Now that's the active location. And then under here, name, what we want to do, just name it anything that you want. I'm going to call it amulet. And then I'm going to go underscore to give it a space. The reason why I do that is see how this says percentage in D? That means for, uh, for each frame, it's going to rename each file. So it'll be un amulet underscore one, amulet underscore two, amulet underscore all the way to 350 frames, if that's how many you have in your turntable sequence. And I think we can just check that really quick by going down here. I see there's more like 451 frames. So um, in the end, we'll have about 451 frames in this. And then the other thing that you can do too is set your options for rendering. By default, it was set to that sampling method. That's going to take a really long time to render. So let's change this to a maximum time. And I think in this case, since we're going to have a turntable, we don't have to have it 100% clean. I'm just going to change it to something like 3 minutes and 30 seconds. The reason I'm doing this is I've already done some testing in the background to make sure that I'll get a good quality out of this. And um, after that, you can choose how many cores you want this to be using. I'm just going to say all cores because I'm not going to be doing anything while this is rendering my turntable. And then basically when you're ready, um, maybe just confirm you have the output settings that you want. I have this set to entire duration, which means it's going to do all 451 frames. 
So yes, I think that looks good. And let's say render. And now we'll see it starting to render just like we did our still frames. It's going to tell you up top here on the top left, uh, animation frame one of 451, for example. It's going to tell you what frame it's going to be at. Now, one thing I think I should do really quick is I'm going to cancel this. I'm just going to close this, uh, stop. I'm not going to tell it to save. What I want to do is I'm going to actually save this because this is going to take a little while to render. I think at 451 frames with around three and a half minutes per frame, it's going to take me over 24 hours to get a render, uh, a full turntable render for this. So in this case, I'm going to call it emulate key shot demo turn table. This way, if something happens, we have it set up perfectly because if you rendered all the way half through and then something crashed and it didn't work out nicely, you might not be able to get it back to the exact settings that you had it previously and it'd be hard to match it up and you have a lot of wasted time. Uh, so anyways, we'll go ahead and click this to let it render again. And at this point, now you just go and hang out, do whatever you need to while this renders. And one thing I will show you in the background is the quality that this came out at, at around three minutes and 30 seconds. This is a frame that I test rendered. And for a turntable frame, I think it's fine. If you look down here, these sections, you see some pixelation, little pixelation around some of the reflections. But a lot of the areas that I need to be clean are showing up nicely. And just imagine when this is uh, rotating a little bit with perhaps a bit of motion blur, you're not going to see any of these little imperfections. I could probably put it down to like two minutes or something else, but I've got time to render this. So I'll let this render for about 24 hours. And then uh, once that's complete, I'll come back and show you guys what the turntable looks like and just have some final notes to wrap up this uh, tutorial we've been doing together. Hello everyone, I'm back, and here is the completed turntable render. It's approximately 15 seconds long, and I believe with having each frame rendering around 3 minutes and 30 seconds a frame, it took a little bit over a day to render. But um, things look pretty cool. You can see it's a really crisp render, but what I want you to take a look at is this bottom area right here. You can see where it looks like our, our light is actually penetrating through that. So check again now without the other screen thing at the bottom. When this comes around, you kind of see what looks like the object being penetrated. Yep, so that's because we have that round light that was down at the bottom. And I forgot about that because when I was in Keyshot, underneath my materials for light white, let's double click that. And then over here, remember how we turned off visible to camera? Let's turn that back on. And now we see that in our camera view. When I had this set up, as the the thing I didn't check is when this rotated all the way through it penetrated at one point so that was something I had to go back through and I did another turntable render which I'll show you in just a second but before I did that I actually went through and I had to select this I went down into position clicked on move and I ended up just moving that out so that it wasn't penetrating fortunately the uh, light blue that we had let's show that in camera that did not penetrate as things were rotating around, so we didn't have any issues with that. Um, and in my next render, I was just kind of playing around with this, and I changed it to more of a red color, which you'll see in just a second. So here is the updated render that I did, uh, where you can see on the top left the more reddish lighting, and then down at the bottom where we had the penetration before, notice how the white light is not penetrating. So I just had to go back and kind of tweak that a bit. And luckily, the uh, render didn't take that long to do, so it wasn't too problematic. And I'll show you the final key shot file. This is where I had it paused. And now, if you come in and we look at these materials visible to camera, you notice that I moved it pretty far out. So if I'm moving on my timeline down here, it doesn't actually penetrate. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's uh, most of it. I'll just kind of put this on repeat here. And um, yeah, I really don't have much else to say. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial series and that you learned a lot about it. I've been sharing my various Facebook and ArtStation links frequently throughout this tutorial series. If you've been watching from YouTube and if you've been watching uh, from home and the downloaded stuff, you'll have links to all my sites that you can uh, share up your own images if you have in your own amulet. So if you just tag me in anything that you do in your own posts, I'd love to see what you guys end up creating. And um, that's all for now. Thanks for your patience and me getting something out new. And I am going to sign out for now and go make some more cool art. Thanks, guys.
This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final key shot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in KeyShot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.